Hi, I'm Hallie, and welcome to Project Strange. Lots of questions surround the structures in our world, such as who made them, how they made them, and why they made them. And Project Strange is our attempt to find these answers through understanding structural engineering. In this episode, we're trying to understand plasticity. But first, let's talk about history. Way back in 1913, Austrian-American mathematician Richard von Mises proposed that a mathematically simpler theory of plasticity than that based on the Tresca yield criterion could be based on the second tensor variant of the deviatoric stresses. Okay, wait, let's rewind. Basically, this von Mises guy thinks that instead of basing the theory of plasticity on the Tresca yield criterion, it could be based on the total stresses minus that of a hydrostatic state in which pressure is equal to the average normal stresses over all planes. Did you know that rocks have plasticity? When a rock mineral is stressed enough, it is possible to see plastic deformation. It's okay, relax, relax. This occurs when it's stressed past its elastic limit, which is more commonly found deeper in Earth's crust where pressures and temperatures are higher. Anyways, in the Mises theory, he incorporates a proposal by M. Levy in 1871 that components of the plastic strain increment tensor are in proportion to one another, just as are the components of deviatoric stress, AKA the system that consists of unequal principal stresses. The criterion was generally found to provide slightly better agreement with experiment than that of the Tresca. And most most work on the application of plasticity theory uses this form. Now I'll pass it off to Peyton with the interview. Could you explain plasticity to me? Yes, but before we dive into the whole plasticity world, we need to think about materials in general. What comes to your mind when I say materials? Like concrete, metal, paper. Yeah, so plasticity is actually the ability of these materials to change shape. Even when we apply a force like pushing on it or pulling on it, they'll change the shape permanently and will never go back to the original shape. In contrast to elasticity, mm -hmm. which is the ability of a material to change shape, but then goes back to its original shape. Mm -hmm. And uh, how does it apply to structural engineering? Because I'm thinking if like, let's say we bend something to make I don't know, a, a roof or something, a piece of metal for a roof on something. Wouldn't we like not want it to be able to bend if we want it to kind of keep its structural integrity? So plasticity is very important in structural engineering and we use it as a sort of warning signs or warning bells before something breaks in a building or a bridge. Okay. So we'll see that permanent deformation happen and then we go, oh, it's time to take action okay. because it's getting closer and closer and closer to that break point. Okay. So we don't want it to reach that breaking point. So we have time when we see that deformation or that, you know, changing shape to come up with a solution to fix it or repair it before it actually breaks. Okay, so would that work for like older buildings maybe? Or do you find it um, applies more to new structures that you're a part of? Definitely older buildings or existing buildings. Mm -hmm that are coming up when getting really old. Mm -hmm. So if you think about a building or a cottage that's built out of wood, for mm -hmm. example, and we have you know, a beam that's supporting a roof. And then over time, we see that there's a bow that's forming and that's a permanent deformation that is happening, a permanent change in shape. And then we can go in and come up with some repairs to support it so it doesn't get to that break point or snap. Okay whatever you know and on a project that you've worked on has it ever like the plasticity has won and um <laughs> the the building has like fallen apart before you got a chance to to fix it or do you catch um, it early on rarely it would get to the point that the building the whole building's yeah, the whole like the whole i'm just thing. being dramatic yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> but definitely elements that mm -hmm. are beyond that you know plasticity level mm -hmm. and there's not really a whole lot you can do in terms of repairs okay yeah. you could replace that one element mm -hmm. and how do we use plasticity in everyday life I'll give you two simple examples mm -hmm. so let me pick a good color here the pink matches pink. your nails Great. both of our nails yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so a paper clip made out of metal mm -hmm. right uh, it starts with an original shape so if we apply a force mm -hmm. or if I pull on it, you can see, dun, dun, dun. and then you let go, and it's permanently deformed. And even if you try to put it back, it doesn't 
always look right the same. <laughs> so it doesn't really go back yeah. to its original shape. Now my second example, <laughs> I brought gum. So you're gonna watch us <laughs> chew some gum. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Hold on, hold on. Cheers. Mm. As we saw, our gum started its original shape as a cube, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. A small little cube. Now it looks like this. <laughs> if we apply a force to our gum, mm -hmm. and so we pull it. Whoa. That does not look like this. It permanently deforms. Plasticity. And it's not going back to its original shape. So if you keep applying the force, right? It will eventually reach the breaking point. And there we have the break point. So we had the plasticity phase mm -hmm. deformation and we applied enough force to it and it reached the break point, which we call failure in this case. So there you go. Wow, plasticity. <laughs> Why did you choose to be an engineer? <laughs> uh, nerd alert. <laughs> So basically, plasticity is a property of materials that describes their ability to undergo permanent deformation when subjected to an external force beyond their elastic limit. In structural engineering, plasticity needs to be understood because structures are subject to various loads and forces during their lifetime, and safety and reliability must be ensured. It influences the design, behavior, and safety of various types of structures. In structural engineering, the transition from elastic to plastic behavior is known as yielding. If the stress exceeds a critical value or yield stress, the material will undergo plastic or irreversible deformation. This critical stress can be tensile or comprehensive. Does your brain feel bigger after this? I know mine does. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to smash that like and subscribe button on your way out. And as always, enjoy the process. I heard that you're having twins. I am having two girls. <gasps> Stop. You Complete. should name them Project and Strange. <laughs> <laughs>